Hi guys! Thanksgiving is getting closer and I thought that this year I want to revisit my favorite Thanksgiving recipe, this delicious pumpkin pie. The pumpkin pie has a crunchy pecan crust and the secret ingredient that goes into the filling gives it a lovely caramel flavor. Let's get started with the recipe. The first thing you need to do, and you need to do this one day ahead of baking the pie, and that is making the crust. The first thing you want to do is to toast the pecan nuts on a dry pan. Just toast them over medium heat for a couple of minutes until they start to brown a little and then remove them from heat, allow them to cool completely and then chop them really finely. Then you want to get some cold butter, you want to cube the butter and you want the butter to be fresh out of the fridge so it really needs to be really cold. Then you want to add all of the dry ingredients into your bowl and either blend the butter with the dry ingredients or mix it with your hands. If you're mixing with your hands, you want to work really fast so that the butter doesn't soften. Then once you have a crumbly texture, you want to add some ice water. It's really important to add ice water. So you just want to add a few ice cubes to the water, allow it to sit for a couple of minutes. Then it's gonna be really cold and icy. Then you want to add the water little by little Mixing in just until the batter forms, so just until it comes together, don't add more. If you end up adding more than needed, then just adjust with a little bit more flour. As I don't have a powerful blender, I usually just make the dough with my hands in a bowl. But if you have a powerful blender, you can also make the pie crust in a blender. That way it's even easier and then you don't have to worry about the butter getting warm. Now that my crust has had time to chill, I can start rolling it out and baking it. Dusting with some flour first. It's not that easy to roll it out at the beginning because it's really cold and hard at this point, but you will get there once you start rolling it out. The more you roll it out, the easier it gets. In order to roll it out evenly, I twist the dough every time I roll it. So I, I roll into one direction, then I flip it a little bit, just a little bit, and then continue rolling. Also, if you dough cracks like this, then just squeeze those bits together and roll it out again, and they will stick together. This can happen because we have the pecan nuts in there, and if the pieces are a little big, then they might separate the dough a little. Then you want to take your baking dish and measure that it's going to be enough to cover the bottom and the sides and have a little bit here hanging over the edge then you can transfer the dough into your baking tin and the easiest way to do that is to roll the dough or roll the crust onto your rolling pin and then just like this and also here if you notice that the dough is cracking a little not to worry, just squeeze those bits together. So now I have the crust in my pie dish. I have really pressed it into the pie dish so that it covers uh, the bottom so that there are no loose points. Otherwise it can be that it starts bubbling. So I want to really press it into the pie dish. And then I have quite a bit of leftovers, but I'm not gonna cut them straight uh, along the um, edge of the pie dish what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut it like this leaving a little bit here hanging because uh the while baking the crust will shrink a little bit so i'm going to cut that off after baking that way i'm going to have a really straight edge here now if you're using a regular pie dish then you don't necessarily need to do this so you can cut the crust uh, a little bit shorter However, if you want to make some decorations on the side, then 
you can also make some decorations right away at the sides and again you don't need to leave this much on the side now i'm just gonna pop the crust in the fridge so it has a little bit of time to chill and i have some bits left over here so i'm gonna use this leftover dough to make some decorations i usually don't place the decorations right on the pie because i like to add them uh, before serving I'm going to make these little leaves and uh, you can decorate a pie right after baking with the decorations or you can leave them on side. I find it's really nice to add some crunchy bits to the pie after baking and I like to just serve them on the table with the pie with some whipping cream or some sour cream. I actually prefer to <laughs> serve this pie with a little bit of sour cream but like i said you can also decorate with the decorations right after baking so don't decorate while baking otherwise they will be really soft so you want to decorate after baking so now i'm just going to roll this out and make my decorations i have all my decorations ready so now i need to get my pie crust you don't need to chill it for a long time just for the time that you're making the decorations then you want to pierce it with a fork so the bottom and also the sides this will allow your pie to bake evenly and it will prevent those air bubbles to form then i'm also transferring my decorations i'm gonna add them around the pie so that i can bake them while the pie crust is baking then you will also need another piece of parchment paper you want to measure it so that it covers at least the whole uh, pie dish and a little bit more then you want to scrunch it like this this softens the parchment paper a little and it will also allow you to uh, shape it easier. So now you want to cover the bottom or cover the whole pie crust with the parchment paper. This will ensure that the pie crust stays in shape while you are baking it. So now I'm also adding my pie weights. I'm using dry peas for that but you can also use pie weights if you have the specific pie weights for baking pies. Now I'm gonna bake the pie with the weights for 15 minutes. After that, I'm going to remove the parchment paper and the weights and bake it for another 15 minutes until it's baked through and has a beautiful color. You can find all the details to the baking instructions and the oven temperatures down below in the description box. The crust has been baked, it's out of the oven and you will notice when it's ready that there is a little color here on the sides and you should notice the color of the base changing. So once we remove the weights, you can see it looks very wet, so it's not baked through. Now you can see it's changed its color, it's nice and light. So that means it's baked through. I also got my decoration parts out of the oven. I actually got them out of the oven earlier than the pie base because I noticed that they are getting uh, some color and I didn't want them to burn. So they took about 20 minutes in my case and now they are cooling. They have a, a little golden color and that's how I like them. So if you are baking the decorations with the pie crust, then just keep an eye on them because they might be ready a little earlier than the pie crust. And now what I'm going to do is to cut the edges here. So to do this, you just need a sharp knife and then just go along the pie dish or your baking form and just cut the excess off. As I said, this is not necessary. So if you're using a different kind of pie dish, you can also leave the sides as they are. Already from just cutting off the edges, I can see how flaky the crust is. It's absolutely delicious and it has those nice crunchy pecan bits. So now I'm gonna transfer 
my pie crust on a cooling rack and I'm gonna take it to the balcony so that it has time to chill while I'm making the uh, filling for the pie. The most important part for the filling is the pumpkin puree. I like to make my own pumpkin puree for the pie. I will include all of the details for baking the pumpkin if you want to make it yourself down below in the description box, whether that's with the air fryer or in the oven. So now I have my pumpkin puree ready. It's nice and creamy. I'm going to add the dulce de leche to it. So this is the special ingredient and it makes this pumpkin pie taste like caramel. It's absolutely delicious. And also adding two teaspoons of my pumpkin pie spice and a pinch of salt. Then what I like to do is to just shortly blend it. This way I will have a really smooth filling. If you don't have an immersion blender, then it's okay to use a mixer or you can also just mix it with a spatula or a whisk until it's well combined. Then I'm going to beat the eggs separately before I add them into the batter. So just whisking them shortly and then adding them into the filling and whisking in. So until it's nice and smooth. And then the last thing I'm gonna add is the flour and I'm first adding in two tablespoons of flour and I'm gonna see how the filling looks before I add more. So just whisking it in. Because my pumpkin puree was really moist, I'm going to add in another three tablespoons of flour. So what the flour does, it sets the pumpkin pie. So if your pumpkin puree is really dry, you don't need to add in as much flour. Or if it's really moist, like in my case, then you might want to add a little bit more in order for the filling to set nicely. So now it's looking good, it's nice and creamy. And now I just need to go and get my pie crust. The pie crust has had some time to chill. It doesn't really need to be cool. Uh, it's just the time that you are making the filling is fine for the chilling, even if you don't have a chance to put it on the balcony. Even if it's at room temperature, that's fine. That's the enough time for it to chill. And then you just want to pour in the filling and spread it nice and even. And now you want to bake the pie as instructed down below in the description box. I hope you enjoyed my pumpkin pie recipe. Like I said, this is my favorite Thanksgiving recipe. For me, the really special thing about this pie is the crunchy pecan crust. I really love pecan nuts and they give a lovely flavor for the crust. But the secret ingredient, so the dolce de leche, that goes into the filling just makes the filling so much better. I really hope that I've inspired you to try this recipe for your Thanksgiving celebrations. Also, if you're looking for some inspiration for Thanksgiving recipes, some appetizers, some side dishes, some mains, or desserts then i'm going to link all my previous recipes for you here if you enjoyed my pumpkin pie recipe don't forget that thumbs up for support and also if you're new to my channel then you can subscribe right now and don't forget to tap the bell so you won't miss any of my new recipes thank you for watching my video and happy thanksgiving to you and your families bye bye until next time